I'm a marine biologist, a person that's devoted basically over 50 years of his life to the study of seabirds. In terms of the adaptations of seabirds, you would have to pick penguins as being superbly adapted for the icy and cold, chilly conditions that they live in. Most people are used to that, and they will know such things as countercurrent heat exchange systems and so forth. And whilst that is very interesting, for me as a biologist, perhaps the most curious and undisclosed fact about these birds is that to dive and to reach depths of over 2,000 feet, they need a little help. And all of these penguins are really geologists. They collect stones and they swallow stones. An emperor penguin weighs 90 pounds in weight, but if you could upend it and give it a shake, you'd find that it has 10 pounds of stones in its belly. And it has those stones to offset the air jacket that it has around its body, and that's how the penguin keeps warm. So it's very buoyant because of the air jacket. They swallow stones purposely. They even feed their chick stones. So the average penguin has about 8% of its body weight that are stones that it swallows, rather like a diver putting a weight belt around its, uh, him or herself. And that's how penguins are able to reach these unbelievable depths. Emperor penguins can hold their breath for 18 minutes at a time, dive to depths of over 2,000 feet. King penguins, half the size, regularly reach 1,000 feet and also hold their breath for about 20 minutes at a time. Penguins are quite simply the masters of mariners of the bird world, and they are unique within the birds. They are the only family where all members are flightless and all members are aquatic. In terms of Antarctica, it's a magnet. Everybody wants to go there. It's like no other place on Earth. And because it's like no other place on Earth, we find birds there that are found nowhere else. People will think immediately of penguins, and of course, there are lots of penguin species in Antarctica, but it's also the petrels. Birds like Antarctic petrels, southern fulmar, and if you throw in the odd albatross or two, you cannot go to Antarctica without passing through the Drake Passage, home of the albatross. This is where the world's largest flying bird, the wandering albatross, lives. Birds that can fly 600 miles in a single day, live to be 60 or 70 years of age, and normally pair for life. I've had people break into tears standing on the deck of a ship heading south to the Antarctic continent. It is without doubt the most pristine, the most magical, the most ethereal place on Earth. And everybody should have Antarctica and a voyage to that white continent on their bucket list.